What's up guys, welcome back to the Green Hole Garage. Right here we have a CD300 supercharger, and this is the supercharger that everybody claims it cannot be rebuilt. c says that this cannot be rebuilt and it is maintenance free. And I'm here to tell you that that's absolute bull. I've rebuilt more of these than I can count and nothing is maintenance free. So today we're going to be getting this supercharger apart taking a look at why it needs to be rebuilt, and we'll get a close inside look as to how this entire supercharger system works. Now, I'm not here to show you how to rebuild it, but you will get some cool inside information as to how this entire system works out. I've got the supercharger apart, and I've got all new OEM parts right here. All we use is OEM parts. I am not going to use cheap junk that's inevitable to fail in people's superchargers. Before I get to assembling this, we're gonna look at the shaft that I just pulled out of it. So obviously, I'm missing some parts on the end of this. And that's because I already disassembled it to take a closer look because this supercharger suffered from a broken gear. Now for a maintenance-free supercharger that's not rebuildable, this is obviously not a good sign. This is one of the many reasons why I tell people that their superchargers need to be rebuilt. Now as to why this gear broke, I honestly cannot tell you. This gear doesn't have any teeth left on it. It does have signs of it slipping an excessive amount, but not too much. I've actually had some that the slip was not set properly and it slipped way too much. The gear was discolored from heat and so was parts of the shaft because it was just slipping that much. This does not have any discoloration. It just has some, some excessive slipping wear and uh, obviously broken teeth. So we need to get this thing rebuilt. Now taking a look at some of these parts, we could take a look at why some of these things do fail. One of the failures that we have are bearing failures. The 300s use a much better bearing than the older style. I have not had many bearing failures with the 300, but they have happened. And what happens is over time, these bearing cages get a little brittle and they break and that causes a bearing to fail. And when the bearing fails, the shaft is no longer being held straight. It wobbles around like that and wipes out the supercharger impeller against the housing. Obviously not good. Another one of these components that fails all of the time is these friction washers. This is actually what sandwiches the drive gear and allows this to slip. And after so much runtime, these get worn down. You do have to reset your slip. And in extreme cases, these have broken. Now, way back in the day, they used to come with ceramic friction washers, which absolutely sucked. They fail all the time, and you would not believe the amount of superchargers that I still get today for rebuilds that use those. If you have those, you definitely need to rebuild your supercharger ASAP, because not only is it past the two-year mark for service life, but those ceramic washers will fail. These are far more reliable. I don't see these failing as often, but of course, it does happen. Now, we already saw that this gear broke the teeth off. In extreme cases, I've had seen the, the entire gear just disappear, completely shatters, fragments up, and it's all throughout your engine. Now, the bad part with any of these things failing is not only do you run the risk of your supercharger being completely destroyed and having to buy a replacement, which is far more expensive than just rebuilding it, you will also have to pull the engine out of the ski, take it apart, and thoroughly clean it to get any fragmented pieces of material out of the engine. If your gear breaks, you're gonna have pieces of this circulating through the engine that needs to be taken out. Uh, you will have needle bearings that scattered throughout the engine. If your clutch washers fail, you're gonna have fragmented pieces of this all throughout the engine. If you do have a bearing failure, typically you will not have any of these pieces throughout the engine. It will get stopped in the supercharger, but this would absolutely wipe out your supercharger. Now that we understand why these things need to be rebuilt, we're gonna start assembling this supercharger and you will see for yourself that it is indeed rebuildable and c is lying to you all. I've got gear and needle bearings on the shaft. You've gotta be very careful with these needle bearings. It is very common for people to drop them, lose them, and you're now you're missing needle bearings. So it is very important that you make sure every single one makes it into here. From there, I'll put a little bit of oil in the needle bearings, spin it, make sure everything is functioning nice and smooth as it should before putting the rest of the supercharger together. Then the additional clutch washer will go on there. We've got this collar that'll hold the spring washers that keep tension on this and what designates the slip. Now, these spring washers are directional. It's gonna be nearly impossible to see this on camera but they're not completely flat. I will put these in the correct orientation here, and then we can thread on the nut. Now this one, we're not gonna put any Loctite on that. We will put Loctite on this one after the slip is set. This one applies tension to the spring watchers, collapses them, and that's how you get your slip movement. On the older superchargers, you would tighten this thing all the way down, and sometimes even have to add shim washers to achieve your desired slip. 
The 300 superchargers are much different if you tighten this one all the way down. You will break a gear, you will break the shaft, and destroy your supercharger. When you tighten this one all the way down, there is no slip whatsoever. It completely locks up the gear. I will touch more on the slip later when the supercharger is completely assembled, and I'll show you guys a really convenient way to do it. So this part is really simple. Now we're going to move on to the more difficult and complicated parts, and that's going to be getting these bearings in. These bearings are fragile and the tolerances on the shaft, supercharger housing, and the bearing is very tight. If you do not do this properly, you will damage the bearings and it will not last. I will not show you guys exactly how to get the bearings in because of how delicate of a process it is. If you screw it up, you're going to destroy your supercharger and I'm not going to be responsible for that. Now that I have all the bearings in it and the shaft and the supercharger, we're almost done with assembling this. And the 300 superchargers, they do have a completely different oiling system and retaining plate that's gonna go in front of this and the older style superchargers. And we're gonna take a look at that real quick. The new retaining plate is just going to bolt into this. And now you can just put it in any bolt holes that line up because the oiling system will not function properly. If you look at the back of this retaining plate, you have this recess here, and it's important that that lines up with the drain back for the oiling on the supercharger. So with that there, we're gonna put this on right here, pop it in, get the bolt holes lined up, and then we'll be able to thread in all of these screws and torque them down. With all of this done, we are now good to go with putting the supercharger impeller on here, putting the front housing back on, then we're gonna flip this around, set the slip, and then that supercharger is done. Getting the supercharger impellers off and putting new ones on is also different on these 300s. If any of you are doing an aftermarket supercharger impeller where you do have to swap these out, you do have to heat up the impeller because like I said earlier, all the tolerances on the supercharger are much tighter. So you will have to use a little bit of heat on the supercharger impeller, allow it to expand just enough to where it can slide off of this shaft. Otherwise, you are not going to get it off. We're now ready to set the slip on this supercharger and how you set your slip and how often you set your slip is really going to depend on your particular c -Doo and the way you ride it. If you're riding around on the stock 300 c -Doo, never really beating on it hard, just nice cruises. Pull the supercharger every 100 hours, set the slip to like 12, 13 foot pounds. If you have a, a modified c -Doo with a stock supercharger, you beat on it a lot, you probably want to set the slip a little bit higher to the 13, 14 pound range and do it more often. Modified superchargers, of course, you're going to want to increase the slip. A typical rule of thumb that we've been saying for years is you need one pound of slip for every pound of boost that you make. Now, on the big superchargers, you do not want to do that. This particular one is going to make over 20 pounds of boost with the aftermarket impeller that we just put in it, and we do not want to set the slip to 20 something pounds. If you do it too high, you do run the risk of breaking gears and breaking shafts, which is not something that we want to do. On this one, we're going to set the slip to 18 foot-pounds. Setting the slip on these 300s are very difficult and tricky to do, but I've done so many of them, I've got a system that works out first time, every time. To do this the right way, you're going to need a few specialty tools. You're going to need a mounting plate for your supercharger. You're going to need a gear holding tool. You're also going to need a shaft holding tool and you're going to need a digital torque wrench. If you use a standard click type style torque wrench, it's not going to be accurate. What you think your slip is, it's not actually going to be your slip. So the final slip of the supercharger needs to be right about 18 pounds. If we end up a little under that, I'll be happy with it. The trick that I've learned to get these superchargers perfect every time is to initially set the slip 1.5 pounds less than what you want the final slip to be. And when you torque down the lock nut on here, it's going to be perfect every single time. We're gonna set the slip to about 16 and a half foot pounds. And when we come back, put the lock nut on, it's gonna be perfect right at 18. got the jam nut torqued down and sure enough the slip on this was right at 17.8 17.9 pounds which is right where I want it to be for this particular supercharger impeller and setting the slip on these superchargers is extremely important but not everybody's going to want to buy all the specialty tools required to check and set the slip on these superchargers especially if you have a stock ski and don't have to do it too often 
So for that, not only do I offer a rebuild service for these, but I also offer a slip setting service for these. Links to all of that will be in the description below. So if you're in need of either of those services, both of that is going to be in the description. And I hope you guys got a really good look as to how this supercharger works and understand why they do need to be rebuilt despite CU saying that these 300 superchargers are maintenance free and do not need to. Unfortunately, I do rebuild these things every single day and I see way more failures than I'd like. It's way cheaper for you guys just to do the maintenance on your ski, have these things rebuilt, then have to suffer the consequences and go throughout the engine. I know some of you guys out there understand why they need to rebuild. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here. Uh, probably tired of hearing about it, but for all of you guys that thoroughly understand this, there's just as many, if not more, that have no idea whatsoever about this, and that needs to be brought to their attention. Now, as you guys saw, this was a failed supercharger. In an upcoming video, I do have this particular ski here. We're going to be pulling the engine out, taking apart, and seeing what actually happens inside of the engine when you have a failure. So look forward for that video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.